right, nothing like starting 20 minutes later than you expected to on your stream. Um, I was streaming for about five minutes and then everything went <laughs> So, um, I had to unplug my computer and because I switched some things around. Um, and then I switched my password and Twitch. And for some reason, uh, OBS did not like that. But nevertheless, we are here. Um, hopefully it doesn't go kaputs. If it does, it's probably gonna be it for the night. I'm not gonna try it again, so I get it sorted out. But uh, yeah, still working on Leatherface. Um, yeah, I was streaming Monday night too. And um, then all of a sudden my iPad wasn't working right and it just went out. So that stream didn't work out. I didn't post that stream. Um, so yeah, let's hope that this uh, this continues to go. I did get a funky error message um, about something about not checking streaming and recording. Um, and it could be because I downloaded um, something from uh, Streamlinks uh, uh, Elgato. And maybe that's what was messing things up. I'm not sure. I just deleted it because it didn't work for me. I was trying to figure out a way to wirelessly, wirelessly stream uh, to OBS from my uh, well, iPad, but that's not going to work. So we're just going to stay wired for the time. But anyway, um, so I titled this uh, chat as uh, some of my favorite things and then some. So, um, I wanted to actually start it off with these bad boys. They are Jet Puff Bites. This is the birthday cake flavor. It's so good, y'all. I can't... I'm not a marshmallow person. For whatever reason, I ordered these. And I'm addicted. Like, literally, that's my second bag. I've ordered two more bags. They also have these, which are the s'mores ones. They're good, even though I'm not a s'mores fan. They're good, but they're not as good as these birthday cake ones. And I'll tell you how the birthday cake ones taste. If you know about the animal cookies with the frosting and the sprinkles on them, they taste exactly like that, but they're soft. So it's just like this softness and then the frosting um, and the sprinkles on it. And you just pop one of those into your mouth and it's like literally heaven. So, of course, I've been, you know, kind of notching away at a, at a couple of these, but uh, this is what they look like. So, yeah, little sprinkles and bite size. Um, I'm going to show you my other favorites, too. Again, it has uh, marshmallows in it. And again, I'm not a marshmallow fan, but this stuff, it came around the holidays, and um, we first got it at Costco, but they had it at Sam's too, and it's seasonal. There may still be a few bags around last time in our area when we were at Sam's. That's where I got that bag. Um, they still had quite a bit. Um, it's really good. It's got peppermint and has little tiny graham crackers. So, yeah. So, as far as food goes, those have been my go to's lately. Um, yeah. And then, since we're talking about food, these are the, these are the kind of things that just humor me. So, um, <clears throat> I spend a lot of time on Amazon. Um, and... I found this. I don't know if you guys can see it in the dark. It's a little dark. But it's essentially it goes in your cup holder and uh, it holds a set of fries. <laughs> because sometimes when I'm traveling um, up to Oklahoma, you know, I'll stop and get something to eat on my way up, either from In N Out Burger um, or uh, McDonald's, because that's my favorite fries. And. You know, I usually set them in my center console, but when I saw this, I was like, ah, I've got to have that. But in all in all aspects, in all reality, I always, I'm always looking for a place to put my phone as well. 
and it does hold my phone. So, you know, I can always justify it that way. But I'm super stoked about it. Like I haven't tried it out yet, but I kind of want to maybe like tomorrow, like just to go out and get some fries and try it um, and see what happens, see, see how well that works. Um, but yeah, that, that was, um, those, those so far this week have been some of my favorite things. Um, because, you know, again, the world is really crappy right now. So just trying to stay positive and, um, yeah, I mean, work, I, um, <laughs> and this is what I'm talking about staying positive. I, I have a standing, um, meeting with my boss every two weeks. And, you know, during that time we're supposed to go through like, you know, what are we doing? What can we improve upon? Do you have any questions? Um, things like that. And um, he, he's a new boss for me. So I'm still trying to learn, you know, like what what he's looking for. What Because even though the job is pretty consistent, I mean, each manager seems to look for something, you know, that they're particular about. So I'm still trying to learn. And I get so nervous every time. Every time I talk to him, I'm like, but you know what? It, it, it went well. And like thing, you know, Monday we, we had a group meeting and he came in late to the meeting and he was like, oh, sorry. You know, I was on, um, I was on the, on my voicemail listening to a customer complain that, you know, they haven't received the call back and that they've left like 13 messages and which, you know, if you work in customer service, sometimes those things get exaggerated. But I literally was like, oh my God, is it mine? Is it one of my claims? Like, I, I didn't know. I was like, I hope it's not. And uh, it wasn't because he didn't bring it up. So, um, phew. Because um, it could only be one of three of us since we're, um, we're the senior members on the team. I mean, I doubt that it would have been a new person, but it could have been. I don't know, maybe. Um, but yeah, so I was just a little concerned that it was me and why. I don't know. I'm not, not done anything wrong that I'm aware of. So yeah, so like when I talked with him today, I thought, oh, Jeanette, like I just kept waiting for that. But no, he was real, real happy with things. And um, yeah, everything was good. So I'm glad. I'm very glad that... Uh, it worked out and but you know I tend to worry about those things so I try to um, distract myself and, and think about other things so that I'm not catastrophizing so to speak um, on um, things like that so anyway probably a little bit more than you wanted to know about my job but nonetheless it was just more about you know, freaking out about things that I don't have any control over. So, but, uh, yeah. Um, think here for a minute. What else? Oh, I found, um, watched a really good show. In fact, I guess I'm all caught up. So I've got, now I've got to wait for them to, um, come out one by one, but, um, on Epics, um, there is a show called uh, From, and uh, it's really creepy. Like, I mean, very first episode, man, just out of the gate, starts out with this, like, they all go inside at night into their homes, and but it's like an old, like, beat up town. Like, there's just a handful of them there, and this little girl like hears somebody calling her from outside the window and so she goes to the window and there's this old woman in there and mom runs in and says you know she's not who she says she is you know don't let her in and then little girl opens a window and is like just her mouth opens up and just like comes in and then like the next day the sheriff of the the sheriff of the town i you know i don't know really really is it is he is a sheriff but um you know the husband comes home because he'd been out drinking he brings them in to show them what happened and they're just completely gutted like just ribs sticking out like completely just gone like bloody leg everything it, it was gross but it got the little girl and it got the mother so whatever these things are they come around at night they try to get you to let them in which is very vampire ish ish but now i'm kind of like and then like the, so these new people came into the into the group 
their family. They were traveling by an RV. They had an accident. But everybody just kind of like, it's just kind of weird. Like everybody's kind of accepting that this is the way it is. Like they can't leave. They can't get out of the town. It just keeps, keeps them on a loop and they keep coming back. So I'm kind of at this point and it, and it just got brought up that maybe they're dead. And whatever these things are, like, I don't know. I don't know if they are vampires or not, or if they're maybe like demons. I have no idea. There hasn't been a whole lot of, um, you know, uh, I guess, uh, like talk about what they are or what they might be. So, um, but yeah, so just, uh, that was really fun. And, um, Watch that. Got caught up on that. Um, let's see. What else have I seen lately that was that was good? Oh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Finally got a chance to watch that. I really liked it. Um, let's see. Watched House of Gucci. Um, I'm on the fence about it. I really, really, really wanted to really like it. But I had some issues. I had some issues with the casting. Um... I, I don't want to, I won't, I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it, but Jared Leto plays a character, um, actually plays his, uh, his cousin. And, uh, uh, I don't know. It was a little too, I think his acting was a little too much for me. Um, I mean, Lady Gaga, of course, is wonderful as always. Um, and I mean, it was really good. It was really good about, Kind of showing like what happened in the family because there was a lot of infighting and um you know what what kind of was happening between between him and and her and and i know about the case so um you know i just tried to go go in with just um not a whole lot of expectations and uh you know it, it was good and then all of a sudden it just kind of like you know he gets shot and then you know, they, f they figure out that, you know, she's behind it. So they arrest her and her, I guess you would call her, I don't know, she started out as a psychic reader. So, but I guess I think at some point, you know, she hired her to be just her personal psychic. And she's the one that, you know, found the, the guys to ask to kill her husband. So, you know, she got, she got put in jail. Um, the two guys that did it got put in jail and only... One of them actually got life, which was the um, gentleman that actually pulled the trigger. Um, and so everybody else is out now. Nobody, nobody else is in jail. Um, and uh, I've watched a few documentaries about it. So, you know, I was, it, I still enjoyed it, but um, yeah, I was, I just thought, I, I guess I just maybe I expected more out of it. So, um, but uh, yeah, so watch that. And, um, I'm getting ready to, um, I'm, I love, um, Guillermo del Toro. He is one of my absolute favorite, favorite, um, directors. And I, I noticed that, uh, Midnight Alley was, um, I think it's in Stars, maybe, um, one of the, one of those channels. <clears throat> it's available to watch. I'm super excited about that. So I'll be watching that probably this weekend. Um, and doing that. So, um, let's see. Other than that, watching that, those shows. Um, the weather. I'm, I don't know where everybody else is at, but the weather here has been crazy. Um, today was pretty warm. Tomorrow is supposed to be like 69 and sunny. And then Friday, it'll be like 36 is the high and snow. But then it starts to warm back up again. And I think like next Wednesday, I saw it's gonna be like 82. So we're in that pattern where, you know, it's, uh, it's very strange as far as the weather goes. So I figured, well... Why can never put your your uh, stuff away? Because um, you know, 
You never know when you might need a pair of shorts around here. A pair of shorts and... Uh, <laughs> a pair of shorts and, you know, sweatshirts, long sleeves, things like that. So... Um, oh, on Shudder, I, I, I uh, subscribe to uh, the Shudder um, stream, streamer, I guess, where they stream uh, horror movies. And um, they usually have like three channels. And um, on the folk horror, they actually had Texas Chainsaw Massacre on last night. So I came into like the last maybe 30 minutes of it. Um, and it was it was interesting because, I mean, I was looking at his mask and um, he does have it over the ear, so I think I'm going to do that here. I'm going to take this dividing line out, and I'm just going to continue this color to the ear um, to make it just a bit more authentic. So I'm going to go up here and do that right now while I'm thinking about it. Just that here, so too much giving, I was giving. All right. Oh. Take a here. We're gonna erase this color. Yeah, so if anybody, I mean, I even wrote myself a list of about talk, topics to talk about and in 15 minutes we're, we're done with those topics. Yeah, so, oh, I don't know y'all, it's getting harder for me to try to come up with things to talk about. Um... What? Okay, so that I don't even know where that's coming from. Where is that? Line right there. You can see it. Oh, you can't. It's just right here. Coming from somewhere. Have a look at my other layers. Um. Oh well, I talked about this Monday night, so I guess um. I, I watched um, the first two seasons of Love is Blind. Um, that's on Netflix, I believe. And um, watched both seasons. Um, it was interesting. Um, it was pretty easy to tell who was going to stay together and who wasn't. But now they're going to do another show called... Oh, crap. I can't remember the, I can't remember the name of it. But basically, it is... You know, you're a couple and one person wants to take it to the next step, i.e. marriage. The other person doesn't. And, um, you go into this home, you go into this house and you're there as a couple, but then you also have the opportunity to meet other couples or other individuals. And so, like, you kind of go on dates with these other people, which is, re that would be really strange. Especially if you were involved with someone. And, you know, you're that person that, you know, has given that ultimatum, basically. Um, I think that would be really strange. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so supposedly you're, you know, in this shared space, and, uh, A person has to decide if they're going to stay with you or um, if they're going to go with the other person. I wish I could remember what it was called. Okay. I'm seeing little, little, uh, Laws and that up. Uh... 
Okay. Yeah, now we got it a little bit more consistent. But then what I also need to do is go clean this up a little bit. Whoops. very anal about how it looks underneath even if you can't see it I like to, I like to have a clean I like to be clean I think I'm on what we talked what I talked about was um, originally had his eyes just completely blacked out but I don't think that that's a good idea necessarily so I was gonna come in here and color interior part skin and then kind of see what my options are for eyes the right tone okay yep I'm there there we go that's better and then just kind of see what we get from there but really I mean yeah, again watch watching the end of that um you know he it's just kind of black it's just really blacked out like you don't see anything see his eyes at all and it's it's so funny as many times as i've seen that movie like i i always tend to forget certain parts of it and like towards the end you know when she's trying to get away from him and she's running down the street And, you know, the truck driver pulls over and he like, he gets out. I'm like, I don't even remember that. Like, and then I was like, what happens to the truck driver? Well, he just runs off. So, you know. <laughs> uh, I was like, wow, I don't remember that. But. See. So let's see. So now let's. I think we're gonna try to do some eyes here. Let's see what we have. See what happens. Oh yeah, I had that one. Put our back corner back on. Yeah, and those eyes don't look like the same color as the rest of the skin. They look a lot lighter. Oh, let's just try it. See, what, see where how, where it goes. Okay. Take this first one here. And not get the eyes right. Got this. here yeah. I, don't think, I don't think these set of eyes are going to be that great but I guess it looks better than it did before okay so let's do this we're going to get rid of that eye, that set of eyes Get rid of that. I still don't think that it's that it's matching the eye department. Yeah, there we go. There we go. 
Better, better. Better, better, better. Oops. Scribbled outside the lines. Okay, let's see if we can get a set of eyeballs that we can live with. Okay. Good. Alright, color tone is good. Okay. Um, I guess I tracked for a second. Um, I was thinking maybe I need to separate. Whoa, separate out his teeth here. Let's see, look. Yeah. Well, at least it's color the same. So, like, I'm trying to think of other things that I've been doing. Oh, oh, I know what I can talk about. Um, I have been watching, you know, YouTube videos at night when I go to bed. And um, I am stuck. Well, I always have been. I've always been a huge fan of Fail Army, which is, you know, the, uh, the, the videos where people are just like doing stupid things or um, you know something happens and they fall or you know that stuff kind of makes me giggle um, but one of the one of the ones that I've really been liking lately I don't know why like I think it's just because I know it's gonna happen and I just I'm like how bad is it gonna be and by all means nobody's like died or anything in, in any of these videos but there's dash cam videos where there's like tons of accidents and then there was one one night where it was just literally like just like crashes like in intersections and it was just like Ugh. and it's like people weren't some people were going super fast um but at other times you know they weren't really going that fast but then it amazes me that there's that much damage to a vehicle um yeah and it's kind of scary too because i i was involved in um a collision in an intersection gosh way back in Ugh. it's been a long time like 96 and um the lights were not sinking, and so mine was... It turned yellow when I was already halfway through the intersection, and then there was a gal coming off the hill, and hers was like, I guess, green as well or something? I don't know, it was weird. And I got hit, I, and I saw it, I saw it, it was gonna happen, and I got T-boned, and it spun me around, and I thought, I remember thinking to myself, I'm gonna go into this built into this business, this building here on the corner. Managed not to be able to do that, which was good. Um, but yeah, that was very scary. Um, I've been in a couple accidents that have been pretty scary, and thankfully, my you know, knock on wood, um, I have not been severely injured in any of them. Um, my very very first accident was. Um, I was with a guy and we were traveling down the highway in California and um, for whatever reason his car just completely stalled. Like it, we're, we're not a gas, I don't know what was happening but it just literally just stopped. And so we came to a stop on a busy freeway at night and we were like kind of around a corner, like around a bend and all I can remember is looking in, you know, turning around looking and cars were seeing us and they were, they were trying to get out of the way and go around us. and. That one car just didn't wasn't paying attention and just clipped us and spun us into the underpass. Um, yeah, I had to be taken out by ambulance on that one, but um, my neck was okay, thank goodness. Um, let's see, my second accident was and all and every single time except for the one where I got T-boned, none of them. I mean, there were none of them were my fault, but nor was I the cause of it. So. Um, my second accident was, um, my ex-husband and I were in a vehicle and we had a Bronco 2, which they're just starting to remake those now, but had an original one. So, you know, it sat pretty high. It was light. 
I wasn't too heavy, but um, we've been arguing, and of course, neither one of us had our seatbelts on, which was so dumb. Um, I, I, we just, you know, we're, we're just in the heat of the, the moment, and um, I guess he was going to go pull over so that we could talk it out, and pull over into some like sandy gravel and it just caught the car just right and it just tumbled. Like I don't even remember how many times we rolled uh, before we came to a stop. Came up to a stop upside down. Um, some people across the way were playing ball and they saw it so they came over to help us out and and that was rough. That was that was really scary. Um, yeah and then being sideswiped uh, in that intersection. So anyway so I guess it just when I see cars getting hit like it just it just Kind of like I've been there, like I've been in that feeling, like, you know, hey, oh, this is going to happen. You know, I don't know if, if you've been in an accident before, but definitely not fun. I mean, yeah. And some of it was, was like, wasn't even road rage related. It was just unfortunate that you were sitting there and the person behind you wasn't paying attention or whatever, just bent right into the back of your car. So, yeah, it's uh, unfortunate, especially nowadays. When, I mean, back back in the day when I had my accidents, there were no cell phones, so we weren't being distracted by that. Um, so yeah, it, it's a lot, I think it happens a lot more now than it used to. So yeah. Um, I've been watching those. Um, of course, I will um, try to find the most grossest thing I can find as far as like medical procedures or bodily things or yeah there's some stuff out there that it's disgusting and i'm just like i'm i'm fascinated but i can't turn away like i can't look away i'm like ah oh, it's so gross right but then i'm like okay where's the next one what's the next video um and then there's another set of um videos where um this guy films this this inlet in um in florida and i think it's called it's called hanover inlet and it is extremely choppy and so he just sits there and films all these different boats trying to get out out to sea but having to traverse these waves first and let me tell you man some people don't know how to drive a boat for one um completely unsafe like the kids the kids don't have life jackets i mean it is bad um, and then, you know, going out in that choppy water and getting thrown around and getting splashed, you know, in the face because, you know, they're sitting up front and weighing the boat down up front, so. But it's kind of cool to see the different types of boats. And, um, uh, you know, just kind of see, you know, what, what are people trying to do? Like, what are they trying to, um, accomplish? So, those have been fun. Um, what else? Hmm. Man, I'm just not... I just don't like any of these eyes. They don't look there's any of them that are like serving my purpose, what I want. There's also animal eyes, but they were like really outrageous. It's not really giving me what I'm looking for. I don't even know what I'm looking for, though. That's the thing. Well, maybe this one. It's like not, the expression is not right. I'm gonna change the I'm gonna change the iris out on it. Maybe make it look like he's looking down first. Try that instead.
So my, my wife was telling me on Monday that apparently um, they are going to, they, that, that there's going to be a um, sequel to Beetlejuice. I'm kind of like, uh, how do I feel about that? I don't know. I mean, they keep making, you know, they keep doing, re you know, reboots of, of uh, other other uh, movies that have turned out okay, so I guess this one's okay too. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with it. And I guess it's being produced by Brad Pitt, which I thought was interesting. But, I don't know, maybe his kids really like it or something, so he thought he would do it. Yep. Doesn't surprise me, I mean, it seems like most things are getting a reboot or some kind of sequel or, you know, something like that. This is here, there, what that is. I don't know which line it's on. Oh, back on my line drawing. Weird. Oh, that keeps happening. See where okay. It didn't bring the eye out as far as I did the last time, so I think I know. I guess. Then, yeah. Fill that in. Oh, why is it doing that? Why, 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 why? For heaven's sakes. So who wants to take a bet on whether or not I actually ever finish this project? <laughs> oh, because I'm just about just about over it almost. It'll be it'll be one of these things that it just sits in my in my gallery and I'm like years from now I'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that. I tell ya. I 
I like I like this right eye, but or this yeah, this right eye. I don't like the left eye. But I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move forward. Try it out. See. I like it enough to actually do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. It's like he's staring off into the distance. Yeah, it's not what I want. Not what I want at all. Alright, so I'm gonna clear this layer out. Clear this layer out. I wonder if I just do draw my own eye. I just have to leave that. Leave that for now. It's not working for me. I don't know what to do. Alright, well let's let's just let's just continue. Get rid of these extra layers. Hair and eyebrows. So I'm going to bring in a reference photo. I kind of wanted to see the color of his shirt. So his shirt is striped and it looks like his tie is black and it's got some kind of design on it. So layer three. Who's gonna be sure. And I wonder if all right, let's see what we got for the shirt. It's kind of a I do the coloring and then put the stripes in. Do that. Sure. And I got lots of colors that are very like kind of uh, very neutral. That's interesting. That's okay. I think. Now here, like, they show his apron is kind of a beige color. 
But I think I'm going to go like yellow with it. And um, so it kind of pops out. But once we get these stripes in here, look pretty good. But... It seems like I've been, I'll say, man, it seems like I've been streaming for a long time, but it's only been an hour, but technically uh, 45 minutes because of the problems that I was having. Problems every day, every day, every day, all day. It's like, I just, I'm amazed at, at the things that happen. <laughs> just trying to stream. Ugh. It's like, oh my gosh kidding me i was about ready to just throw my hands in the air and be like that's it i'm done I'm done streaming but all right i gotta figure it out i have to remember if i ever change my password that it's gonna mess obs up so hopefully i won't have to change it and the only reason i had to change it was because when i was trying to log in doing that um screen link thing um i couldn't remember what the password was so i'd change it so that i could um get into it that's what caused all that problem Um, I was telling you guys about uh, my wife and her drawing her dog portraits. So she just finished the one that she had been working on for like in forever. So I'll, um, if you're interested in seeing it, I'll post it to my Discord so that you can go take a look at it. It's probably one of her best ones yet, for sure. Um, I love it. Absolutely loved it. So, and then she was like, I don't know what to draw now. I don't have anything to draw. Um, I've been, oh, on YouTube, I've been watching this guy called Dave's Little Beasties. And it's this guy, he has like all kinds of spiders, like really cool looking spiders. And he keeps spiders and scorpions and, you know, millipedes and centipedes, all kinds of crazy things. But he has these, um spiders that are called uh, Brazilian jewel spiders. They're absolutely beautiful. Beautiful spiders. Um, they're like an iridescent blue and yeah, it's it's really cool. So I was like, oh, just draw me a spider. So she was trying to do that. And they're, and they're considered a tarantula, I guess. So um, she said that she, you know, she would draw me one. So she was doing that. Um, cause it is kind of hard cause it's, you know, it's got all the color and then it's also got all the hair on it. So it should be challenging to draw one. And then it makes me want one. Like they're so cool looking, but they're really big. Like they, they are just, they're kind of scary, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they're super pretty. Let me see if I can find one just to show you guys. What did I say it was a Brazilian jewel spider? Brazilian jewel tarantula, I guess, is what technically it is. Oh, I want to shop for one. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to find one that really shows their color really well. This is pretty, this is a pretty good indication of what they look like. All right, here you go. Brazilian jewel spider. Isn't that pretty? 
Yeah, it's just awesome. Like, I might want to draw one myself. They're that pretty. Just to see if I can do it on the Procreate. But yeah, so... We'll see what happens there with the spatas. But if you're if you're looking for something cool to watch, um, I would recommend his channel. Again, it's Dave's Little Beasties. And um, yeah, he's got so many different spiders. And like he, you know, shows you like when he's transferring them from one enclosure to another and you know, he's got to pull their their substrate and everything out and he's looking for them and then all of a sudden like just all these big spiders come out of nowhere and he's like putting him in the new enclosure and they're climbing up the glass and coming over the top and he's just like oh get back in there and he's just like not worried about it at all and then like he'll open the glass to clean the glass and i, I keep thinking man like the spiders are gonna come running out of there but he was like they're never gonna want to leave the comfort of their environment so uh, he was like, you know, it's okay to just open up the glass. It's not going to run out and, you know, jump out at you because it's, it's comfortable where it's at. So, yeah, I mean, he shows like when he mates his spiders, he shows videos for that. Um, he goes in there sometimes at night because some of them are nocturnal and um, puts a light on so you can see them because they don't come out during the day. That's really cool, but I've learned a lot about spiders since I've been watching his uh, channel. Um, yeah, it's amazing um, the different spiders that he's had that he has, and like um, he did get a batch too of he he ordered online um, some really scary spiders. Um, there's like sand spiders and. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he was like, this is not a, um, a beginner spider. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it looked freaking scary. And then he also, um, got another spider. I can't remember what, what it was called, but it had some fangs on it and it's very, very aggressive. Most of the spiders, he was just able to coax out, you know, with a paintbrush. This spider, as soon as you put that paintbrush in there, it literally turned on the paintbrush and attacked it that quick. And yeah, and then it was like, you could see the, the venom like sitting there on its fang. Ooh, that one gave me the willies. I won't lie. Yeah, so there was that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, that's okay. But yes, he's very, very, very knowledgeable about spiders. It just amazes me, you're like, you can go online and just buy a spider. <laughs> That's what's going online. And so we, um, there's this documentary called Chicken People. And it's about people that show their chickens. Like, I never knew there was a vast amount of different types of chickens. Um, and it's like dog shows, but it's for chickens. And it was just fascinating. But I was like, where do you even get chickens? And like, my wife told me that her brother um, and stepdad used to just go and, and look for chickens on the internet and go and buy them and then just have them. And I would just be like, what? I never knew that. But I, um, when I was little, my aunt had a chicken coop and she used to send me out there to get the eggs every morning. I absolutely loved it. It was so like... I liked the way the coop and the hay and things smelled. Oh, well, I used to. Maybe I don't now. But when I was a kid, in my mind, um, it was like this sweet, you know, warm smell. Um, and then just getting those warm eggs right, right then and there, like, it was the best. And um, so, you know, I was like, oh, well, maybe when I retire, you know, I can have a, I can have a chicken coop. But um, yeah, there, I never knew the, the vast amount of chickens that are out there. But um, if you have a chance to watch that documentary, I would suggest you watch it. It's definitely interesting about, you know, I mean, there's some people that that's all they do are these chickens. Like they don't have time for a social life. It's crazy. So yeah, it's uh, it was very interesting to watch that. And then, like they, they do like a whole like, you know, okay, yeah, this one's one. You know, now it goes on to the next next phase or whatever of 
um, judging and uh, all the way up to best in show it's just yeah it's it's just like I said you gotta watch it definitely crazy 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 Oh. oh, sorry. How did he gone? Tired. different for every every piece here so it's gonna take a little bit of doing a couple layers here and there that I'll have to, to do and then merge back together Stuck in my head Think I need to escape Feels like I'm waiting But it feels the same My mom used to say That no matter Interesting, it just stays the same It's not going to get wider or smaller Because it's kind of I don't know if I like that or not
right now if we go up next layer and let's try and Pretty soon, this will start looking like a shirt. Get all the base colors laid down, and then we can grunge him up. Because he's very grungy. Creepy, creepy, creepy. I, was, I don't know if I told you guys, but I, I did watch a documentary about making Texas Chainsaw. Um, it was very interesting, and... I guess during the the scene where they have her, you know, in there at the dinner table and whatnot, like it was just super hot, and of course there wasn't any air conditioning in this house, and so it was just like I guess the the lead gal um, she was saying that you know the the actor that was playing Leatherface, well that outfit never got washed, like it didn't they didn't wash it in between times, so it just became more sweaty and gross. And so she was just talking about how, you know, that really led to um, the the ambiance of the movie and the, and that scene um, because she was just like, yeah, it was super stinky and just gross. <laughs> so I was like, ooh, like I can just imagine. And it was in Texas and all I could think is just like, yeah, that would have been miserable. And I guess there were, you know, members of the of the troops or whatever the, the um, you know, the the the, the team or the you know the people that help make the movie that do the different things, and they were just like it was like take after take after take, and they were just they were just like I, I they were like I couldn't wasn't really sure how much more that they could take before they were just like we've got to stop, so. And then two, like they would like go out and they actually would find actual animal bones um, to put around the house and things like that. And so, like anything that was dead or maybe if they found something on the side of the road, they would use it. They'd be like, "Oh, we'll bring it in and use it for the movie," you know. And it was kind of interesting to hear, you know, see that. And like in the opening scene, you know, it kind of, it, it goes in on an armadillo and they were talking about how, um, you know, Toby wanted it, to, wanted it to be a dog. And they were just like, <laughs> they felt like um, showing a dead dog would be um, really harsh and uh, would be maybe not, maybe not inappropriate, but just that it would have been too much to show a dead dog. And I was like, okay. This movie is like probably one of the most depraved movies ever. I mean, if you think about it, it's really gross and disgusting. And it could happen. Like, it's something that could actually happen. But then they're like, oh no, no, the opening scene with a dog, with a dead dog on the side of the road is too much. That, that cracked me up. I was like, there, no way. But yeah, that's how that happened. So, yeah, there's that. That was, I just, I don't know that I finished watching that documentary. I still might have, you know, about a good half hour left on it, but it was just really cool to hear about, you know, how it got started and the actors in it and, you know, how they were just kind of like, well, they weren't really sure what they were getting into, um, you know, but, you know, that they wanted to do the film and they were serious about it and, you know, yeah, it was low budget, but they really believed in it. And I mean, and now look at it, you know, it's one of the best, probably one of the best horror movies ever made, in my opinion. Um, and it's probably my favorite as far as slashers go. Um, I like Friday the 13th um, a lot. And I would say it is my, it is my, probably my second favorite. Um, Michael Myers is probably my least favorite and it's not so much his character as it is the movies although I love Jamie Lee Curtis she is fine even at the age that she's at now that woman is fine I absolutely love her I, I hope that I get to meet her someday that would be so awesome um, so I do I do like her and so I do, I do like that movie because of her um but, uh, 
yeah, he'd be probably my least favorite. And then, like, Freddy Krueger, I mean, I grew up with that, so I, I do like that. I like Scream, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I think out of all of those, um, you know, type of, type of characters, <clears throat> um, yeah, Leatherface is always going to be my favorite, so... Yep. And trust me, I'm not going to get in trouble for saying Jamie Lee Curtis is fine. My wife already knows that. <laughs> uh... <laughs> she was... The other night, though, we were talking about... <clears throat> I don't even know how we got started talking about it, but... When I grew up, I mean, I had a lot of crushes on some, ac some actresses, you know. Most, most kids grow up or, you know, straight kids. And it's like they've got, you know, they would have like, oh, I don't know, Sean Cassidy or, you know, something like that on their on their walls. And, you know, I wanted to have like, you know, Farrah Fawcett and all that, you know, on my walls. But it just wasn't something I was going to be able to do. So, you know, I was trying to tell her like I had, you know, all these different crushes. Morgan Fairchild. Um, and they were all mostly blonde women. So... But then I was like, well, I wonder what happened to so-and-so. And so I started looking it up and then, you know, I'd be like, oh, she, you know, she's doing this now or whatever. And then, I don't know, I guess my wife got tired of it because she was like, well, I'm, I'm so glad that you're so like, you know, just following up on them and, and finding out what's going on. And I was like, all right, I'll stop talking about it. But it wasn't like, you know, it was just funny because she was just like, wow, I'm, I'm really glad that you're just so like, you know, figuring all this out. So. That kind of made me laugh. I mean, it's just not like she's jealous or anything, but. You know. I was, I was gushing, I guess, you, you could say. But, yeah. And I mean, I grew up in a time where, you know. Women they didn't wear a lot of makeup. Um, I mean, but that. I mean, the hair was, you know. The hair was special in the 80s. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess some of them did, but it was fun. Uh, I'm trying to remember if I had any guy, if I had any crushes on guys when, when I was younger. Because, I mean, I kind of was still trying to figure myself out at that time. I mean, you know, I had a boyfriend. I mean, I, I got married, you know, so obviously I've, I've been, I've been with men. Um, so, but... I don't remember if I did or not. I think I did. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I will tell you, I did. Uh, my best friend at the time and I, we were obsessed with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know that sounds so silly, but we were. And I can remember going to the movie theater and seeing Total Recall with her. And then that was right about the time that he got married to Maria Shriver. And we were like so mad. We're like... Dang it, she had to come and take, you know, like as if either one of us would ever have the option of even meeting him or, you know, at that time, who would have thought that, you know, you could actually reach out to, you know, actors like you can nowadays. But, oh my god, I just remember that being just like so, so like, yeah, he's, I, mean, I mean, he was good looking when he was younger. No, not so much. I mean, he's older, but not because he's old. It's just, you know, but um, I can remember that. That was pretty funny. Um, and it, I mean, I loved Prince. I didn't really have a crush on him. Like, he didn't do anything for me, but just his magnetism I was drawn to. So, yeah, there were a few, a few men, but mostly, it's going to be mostly women, I tell ya. Um, I should have known back then what was to come of it, but, um, that's another story for another time. But, uh, yeah. It's pretty funny. So, I think I like the shirt. I might... I'm gonna group all these together now that I've got them there. And I think I might... I might lighten it up a little bit still. Alright. There we go. There we go, there we go. That'll do it. That'll do. Alright, so we've got his shirt on. Put it on over that. Good. So one thing. Alright, let's work on this tie. We'll do this tie. 
with black in this photo. And you can see what I'm talking about on his eyes. Is like he's got a he's got a really prominent ridge on his eyes. I don't know. And I see and, the, and when then I'm looking at the face too, and I'm like, I don't like those eyebrows. In fact, I think I'm just going to take them out because I don't like them and I'm going to put different ones in. So let me whoop, do that here real quick. Oops. Okay, so now do, 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 do. matches good, 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 good. And some nice, a nice little base foundation going on here. Uh, okay. All right, good, 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 good. Okay, we're just gonna keep on going then. We're going to probably come back to that face at some point. So let's do kind of like I want to do black, but I don't want to get too black. Modify it here at some point. Too many heartbreaks still on your mind. Let the flame burn down for a while. Let the flame flare out for a while. Stay in the moment. Stay in the moment with me. Give you a moment. Give you a moment with me. Smell all the roses. Smell all the roses with me. Whoops. Kind of see what that it's like a weird tie. It's like a, a gradient, a gradient kind of thing to it.
Yeah, I don't know if I've um, talked about it, but um, just trying to find topics to keep, to keep talking about. But um, I do have a trip planned to London at the end of the month. And um, related to music, I was just listening to the music. And um, I absolutely love, and I always had, um, David Bowie. He's one of my favorite artists and um, was really upset when he passed. Still am, still very upset about it. Um, but in London, um, there, there's a huge history of him, uh, being there and, and, and doing some records there and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and there was this really cool pop-up, like, uh, merchandise museum type thing, um, probably a while back that was there. I, I watched a YouTube video on that. It was really cool, but... I'm kind of looking forward to like, I mean, I really want to see, of course, the major stuff. I mean, I, that, that's a given. Um, but, uh, it was really cool that, um, that they, there's, there's little plaques around the, the town, around where we're staying in Soho, um, that are kind of like a, a you know, a little tiny memorial. Um, there's even, um, uh, the Beatles, of course, and I guess, I guess where we're staying, like, right around the corner is where Paul McCartney, um, like, he has an office or something there, so that's really cool. Kind of, a, that would be kind of cool if I saw him, you know, like, never thought I would see someone like that. I mean, I grew up listening, you know, to the Beatles, because my mom, my mom was a huge fan, because that was her, her thing, you know, when she was a teenager, that, that's when they were, were big, um, you know, and had starting to get popular and, and, and stuff. We, as I, and I can actually remember asking her, like, Mom, did girls really get that excited about someone and faint? I mean, I was just like, come on. But I have my musical artist that I'm super, super, like, just stoked to see. So I guess I, I could see how you would be, like, screaming your head off like that and just about ready to faint. Yeah, and... Um, my favorite, my utmost favorite artist, uh, music artist, is Tori Amos. Um, it has been for, gosh, since I can remember. And I've seen her probably in concert, probably at least... Oh, I'm trying to think. It's been at least five times. At least. And, um, I mean, I, I have all her albums. Um, and... She was here, she was here in Dallas probably about, right when we moved here about eight years ago and I went and saw her. So that was about the last time I saw her, but man, just phenomenal. Musician. And um, <laughs> I can remember one time when I called, this is when you had to call to, to buy your tickets, okay? So this was probably maybe 15, uh, probably maybe 20 years ago. Um, so, you know, you call and then you talk to someone and then you're like, hey, you don't want to buy tickets for, you know, whichever seats, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, because it was before the internet, kids, before the internet. Yes, there was a time before the internet. And I really don't know what we did, but, yeah, so anyway, so you either stood in line for tickets or you could call and get tickets. So I, I called right away, I got in, I was like one of the first few people to get in and get tickets. So... The ticket taker was like, well, where do you want to sit? And I was like, um, on stage next to her. <laughs> a total, a total goob. And she laughed, so she took, she took it well. She understood. But I, I mean, we got front row tickets to that concert. And that was, that was something else, man. That's something I'll never, ever forget. He's just so, I mean, genuine and just so, just breathtaking the way she plays piano. I absolutely love it. So, yeah, I was pretty pretty excited about that the few times that I've seen her. Of course, I didn't get to see Bowie. I didn't get to see Madonna. My my wife got to see Madonna once. Or that would have been really fun. There's lots of them that, uh, you know, I'm not going to get to see concert, unfortunately. Um, two, and I just, I think I just saw something on the internet about uh, Phil Collins. Like, he just looks, like, really just frail and old, and I'm just like, how does that happen? Like, in my mind, when I think of Phil Collins, I still think of him when he was, you know, probably 40 years ago, how he looked. And, you know, it's just hard to see 
my favorites are getting old and dying and I hate that because I mean just losing losing some really good musicians and we're not really replacing them with what I feel are are the quality or the caliber that they are um, now there's some good ones that are out there um, I won't I won't I won't lie there's maybe a handful but um, again if they're to the caliber of, of you know Phil Collins and and, and Queen and you know uh, Whitney Houston and just all of those really great great singers yeah there's not a whole lot of those today so but it's it's interesting but yeah so I'm kind of excited you know to kind of see that even though I'm not a huge Beatles fan I was a John Lennon fan I still am a John Lennon fan and George um, Harrison those were my two favorites um, absolutely love John Lennon um, and so I guess too there's a there's a part of it where they did their last uh it was like in 72 um it was their last performance of all of them together and it was on this rooftop there um they've they've put two flats above it now already but um but it's there so that's kind of cool so yeah lots of um rock and roll memorabilia that's there um in that area so kind of looking forward to that they have a whole uh, merchandise uh, museum on uh, the Rolling Stones. Um, I'm a fan of the Rolling Stones, but I'm not that much of a fan where I want like lips all over everything. Uh, but they do have that there, um, so I've, I've, I found that that to be fascinating. I'm also curious, like when we go, like where do they go to get their things, like fans and like my my wife and I love a fan running while we're sleeping. Of course, that's not something we're going to take on the plane with us, but. Um, it'd probably be something we might buy when we're there and maybe we'll ship it back home. I don't know. We'll just leave it. Um, but it's like, where do they shop? Like, there's no Walmarts. I don't think there's a Walmart in England. That would be really weird. Um, but it's like, you know, where, where do those people go to get that kind of stuff? Like, you know, like, there's, is there a Target? <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah. And uh, what else? Like groceries, just different. There is a Whole Foods, which I found interesting. So that that's interesting there. But it looks like there's some other stores that are really like just really cute, quirky little stores to go to and get groceries. So I'm kind of excited to see that stuff too. Like I'm really thrilled about, um, you know, just kind of like what's going on in the city. Um, they've got Jack the Ripper tours because all of a sudden I was like, oh my god, that's right, London, London, Whitechapel. I'm like, come on, be like right there. And, um, yeah, I'm so, I'm, I mean, that hopefully will be something we can do. I think my wife and I agreed to, we've, you know, of course we're going to agree on the major things. Westminster, you know, maybe changing the guard, um, you know, quite, quite a few of the castles and those, those sightseeing things, London Bridge, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but then there's the, the side stuff that, you know, maybe she hasn't thought of, but I want to do that we're going to kind of like, okay, now I'm going to throw this out here. You know, what do you think? Do you want to do this? Um, so they, I guess they run a, a, a Jack the Ripper tour that's a, it's kind of a, a virtual Jack the Ripper tour. So like they, somehow they give you a gadget or something where it superimposes and then it reenacts certain things at certain locations. So I was like, that's really cool. Um, and then there's a beautiful cemetery there with just, um, we watched a whole video on this lady that went there. Um, just absolutely beautiful Celtic crosses, mausoleums, and it's just overrun with ivy and foliage. And it's just absolutely beautiful. And I cannot wait to go there. Um, I don't know if we'll see everything, uh, but she did go around to some famous people's uh, graves. Um, I, apparently George Michael is buried there, but it's unmarked. It's not, it's not marked as his grave, probably because they don't want people, you know, bringing stuff and, and leaving it and or defacing it or anything like that. But I guess he's buried next to his mother um, there. So I might maybe do a little little research on Google and um, see if I can find out where that's at. Because um, again, another one of my favorite artists that I did not ever get to see, unfortunately. Um, and was part of my tribe. So, um, but yeah, so wanted to do that. And, and part of me too just wants to like, have some downtime where you just maybe sit at a cafe and don't do anything but just watch people for a bit. We're gonna have to have high tea. High tea for sure. 
Um, that's going to happen. So that's, that is on the list as well. And then there's a, um, a restaurant and I cannot remember the name of the restaurant, but they have these, um, clear, uh, like cr clear acrylic igloos that you can sit inside of and they do them up like they do them seasonally. So they change the decorations in them. And I thought, oh, well, that was really cute and kind of romantic. So, um, I did plan for us to have dinner there. Um, I think the Tuesday when we arrive or that first Tuesday that we're there. Um, just for something to do, like, you know, take photos and hopefully it's rainy and kind of little, you know, little light, twinkling lights going on, a little, little romantic dinner there. So looking forward to that. And you get the entire igloo to yourself for like an hour and a half or so, um, depending on how, how long it takes for food. So super excited about that. Super excited for it to be cold and rainy and drizzly because I just absolutely thrive in that kind of weather. Um... This hat that I'm wearing, I would take it off and show you a little bit cooler, but my hair is awful. I it's so it's so long and I, I need a haircut so bad. But these hats are by Melon. Um, it's M E L I N, and let me tell you, some of the best, absolutely the best ball cap or hat, um, other than the Flex Fit, that I that a snap like this. I love this flat bill. I am obsessed. This is the summer edition. It's got some holes back here, little tiny perforated holes. It, you can throw it in the water, it'll float. Other one I have is the same exact type hat, but it is all, it's covered and it's completely waterproof. So that I'll be wearing, you know, my wife doesn't care if I wear hats and for me it's easy, it's something easy to do. I love wearing them. I think that, you know, I think it, it fits my personality. Um, so other than maybe like going to dinner um, you know, maybe being a little dresser. Probably every day is going to be wearing, uh, wearing that hat. The reason I got the summer hat was because I was wearing the other hat and it was really hot and I had to take my dog to the vet and I was like sweating and I was like, oh man, this thing does hold the heat. So I better get the summer one. <laughs> so I'm wearing the summer one and I, you know, I want to make sure nothing happens to that one because I, I am famous for getting something for a trip and then I'm like, oh, we're going to wear it now. And then something happens to it spill food on it or you know it gets dirty something always happens to it so i'm trying hard not to wear the things that i'll be wearing when we go on our trip so um which is all things that i can wear afterwards so uh, but yeah i'm pretty much going to be like a hoodies and jeans girl i've got some really cool boots that i'm taking i'm only taking one pair of boots they're waterproof so i'm pretty much set up for being out in the elements and um i can't wait I, I just if it's raining i don't care we're gonna we're gonna be out doing stuff and uh you know having a good time but i'm so excited it's it's coming up it's it's, it's getting closer day by day and you know now i'm like okay i gotta do this and like oh wait i gotta do this well, remember to do this start writing my you know list down to remind myself to do things um before we go but yeah so really 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 excited about that uh, don't know if anybody else has traveled or not outside the U.S. This is my first trip outside the United States ever. Yeah. And we work hard. We work really hard. So, you know, it's um something I'm just, uh, we just started talking about it and we were just like, why not? Let's just do it. I mean, if you never do it, if you just sit around and keep talking about it and you don't ever take action, it's never going to happen. You just have to take action and do it like and I'm so worried like I'm like what if we don't get to go like what if this thing with Russia just blows like completely out of proportion and we are in World War three um, I mean I, I haven't really been keeping up on it um, but I'm a little worried about that in fact someone asked me you know are you worried about going over there because of what's going on like, no I'm not really that I'm not worried I mean Yeah, I mean, th if, if things are going to happen, they're going to happen. I don't have control over that, so I can't really worry about it. I hope that nothing bad happens while we're over there. Like, I guess maybe bombings or whatever is what she was getting at. But, I mean, I don't I don't know really that that would be an issue for London. Like, I don't know that there would be a target for that. Maybe Paris or I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It's hard to say. But um, I've signed up for... I get notifications from the embassy, so... If anything's going weird like that, I should know about it fairly quickly because they'll put a bulletin out. Um, and uh, so I haven't seen anything yet. 
but I don't like flying and it's like a almost an 11 hour flight overnight over the Atlantic Ocean so that's a little scary to think about but um, we did upgrade ourselves so that we have our own little pods when we're flying and um, in that little pod you can lay your seat all the way back and you can lay it down flat and so you can lay down and actually sleep which is good for me because I get pretty pretty tired and I don't want to be too groggy when we get there like it'll be maybe like 10 a.m. or so when we get there and then we got to go through customs and all that so probably another good couple hours with that so it's gonna be a long long day so the ability to sleep is very important for both of us knowing how we travel and we travel extremely well together we're very very compatible with tra when traveling um you know it, it's okay to say you know i need to take i need to take it slow or i need to slow down a bit or you know can we can we sit for a bit and just watch people go by um or you know let's let's try to just maybe not do as much so um it's pretty good there um so i'm, I'm really just um, so excited that we get to go and do this and, and get to do it together. So it'll be a lot of fun for sure. Um, so I won't be streaming during those times, but I'll, I'll put that on my schedule that I'll be on vacation mode for that time. And, um, hopefully I'll have lots of stories to tell you guys when I get back, but yeah, so I'm kind of interested more in like the dark, dark sides of, of London. So of course, you know, Jack the Ripper and, uh, and the, and the, the cemetery for sure. I mean, my phone is full of photos. Um, I bought this really cool selfie stick that like folds over itself and it has a little button for a Bluetooth button. So got, I'm just trying to like get things like that that I'm like, oh, I might want while we're out, you know, taking photos and things. And then that was also the, that was also the, uh, <laughs> when we just got new iPhones about a couple months ago, that was the uh, deciding factor in getting the new iPhones because we had 10s and so we upgraded to 13s was because the camera was a lot better and oh well we're going on our trip so we need to get new iPhones. <laughs> I'm telling you that's how we think right so yeah so that's that's how that came about and uh, <laughs> yeah that's so that's what we'll be doing when we're in London uh, it's just gonna be so much fun I just can't it's, it's just each day gets closer and closer and I'm just like is it really reality like is it really like is it really gonna happen are we really gonna get to go over there and and do these things and yeah so and that's the thing I mean I absolutely I'm so afraid of, of flying it's not even funny but you know it's like if I want to go places then I have to get on the plane there's no there's no way around it it's just it has to happen so um yeah, I'm gonna have to buck it up <laughs> and do it. But I've got things to do. Like I, you know, I got apparently. I mean, again, watching tons of YouTube videos about flying and flying on this on this certain type of aircraft. Um, it's a Boeing 737-300 ER, I think. Um, so far, I mean, that's the plane that we're supposed to get. I mean, it's very. Um, there's a. There's a probability that you know they change the planes on us um when when they get there but probably not because i mean this one's equipped for going uh, across the way across the pond so to say so to speak um so yeah there there's that um and i'm really trying to not watch there's a documentary on netflix about boeing and i'm i'm really trying not to watch it because i don't want to get freaked out but you know they had so they had some trouble there for a bit with their planes yeah but uh trying to think about that but yeah apparently you know you get in there and they you know they bring you drinks right away they bring you champagne champagne is like huge in london like it is just it's crazy with with it um i don't like that yellow decided it needs to be it's more like a rain jacket yellow Let's see what do we got as far as rain jackets go better 
That's two. Eh, I like the other one better. I can't remember which one that was. Yep. Okay. Is it the one I've been doing? Oh. Let's see. Close. Close. Florida. Okay. I'll just go with it. Uh, oh, and the food that's over there, man. Just oh, we went to, oh, I forgot talking about being on the plane. You know, they bring you drinks and stuff, and I guess you have to pick your dinners before you. Board, which that just reminded me that I've got to do that because um, I don't think I'm gonna be too hungry because I'm probably my stomach's gonna be upset but yeah I guess the champagne flows on the plane and um, but you you know you can get other drinks and whatnot there too so we're getting we kind of splurged and we're we kind of you know upgraded our, our seats the accommodations that are a little bit more you know, comfortable so you know that will be interesting as well. I've only flown first class once, um, and that's been, gosh, about 15 years ago when we went to New York, and that was a fluke. It just was like, hey, do you guys want to upgrade? It was like literally another hundred dollars per person, and so we took we took them up on it and we did, and that that was good because I felt like I had some more room, um, and I I didn't feel like I was cramped in my seat, so I think I, I was able to handle it better the flight, um, so that was good. Um, but yeah, so this time it's business class, not first class, but business, and uh, that's why we get kind of the you know, the amen am amenities. We get like a, you know, we can get a little kit with some stuff in it, um, you know, some a pillow and and some sheets. And I don't know if they'll give us like robes and PJs or not, but there are some flights where they give you like little slippers and they give you like little PJs you can go you know change into if you want and then you know they have a turn down service so they'll come make up your your um, seat for you so you can go to sleep yeah it's really cool and then like you know pretty much when everybody's supposed to be sleeping you know they turn the lights out they're like psh, lights out and it's like oh nice so yeah and you can just you know get up and do your thing and have snacks and They've got, you know, your little in-flight, um, you know, little, uh, TV, lots of little plugs and stuff that you can plug your stuff into, and, and, uh, and then, you know, in the morning they wake you up, you get breakfast, you know, have some coffee, um, you know, come in for, come in for landing and whatnot, so, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting. More like, am I gonna be able to sleep on the plane? Like, am I gonna be able to fall asleep? on the plane and you actually get a good night's sleep. That I don't know. <laughs> and I'm not sure about. But like I said, I, I take medication to make me sleep. So I assume that at some point it's not gonna matter how I feel because my body's gonna take over and it's gonna shut down. And I'm gonna be like that's what it feels like when my medicine kicks in. It's literally like this wall comes over me, which I kinda feel like it is right now. Like feeling a little bit of it because I took it earlier and so it's like it's just this wall that comes over me just like okay time to go to sleep and it's almost like just shutting down and rebooting um and I can't fight it when it gets to that point there is no fighting it so to go with it so hopefully that will happen and just have a really good sleep wake up refreshed and we're ready to land and get there and do our thing and I don't know what we're gonna do that first day. I, I guess we can go to the hotel and some sometimes they'll let you check in early. Um, so, you know, maybe we can do that. But, you know, my wife's like, look, you gotta stay awake until the nighttime because, you know, we're gonna get kind of thrown off if we don't. So that's why sleeping on the plane is gonna be really important. Otherwise it's gonna be a very long day. It's gonna be very hard to um, do that because I think they're like um Alexa what time is it in London in London it's 6 or 3 a.m. yeah so they're like six hours ahead of us 
So it's 12, so they're six hours ahead. So, yeah, just gotta stay up and try to go to bed when it would be normal time there. So... But even, you know, when we get there, we can have the hotel, you know, hold our luggage for us if we can't check it in until later. And then we thought, you know, we'd go around and walk around and just kind of explore the streets a little bit. And, um, of course we had to, we had to find the, we had to find the Starbucks. There's one right around the corner. There's quite a few st Starbucks. I was amazed by that. Because I thought for sure, I'm like, oh, there probably won't be, you know, a whole lot of um, that kind of stuff. Nope. The Starbucks are everywhere. And, um, and I've been kind of joking because one of their drinks is called a London Fog. If you've never had one, it's absolutely delicious. They use their black tea, um, and they put vanilla and this, like, they foam the milk. And, um, it's just, just, oh, it's like heaven in a cup. I'm not a big tea drinker, um, of hot tea. But man, I I love that London Fog so much, and uh, just thought it would be funny to go and order a London Fog in London, and yeah, so there'll be some Instagram photos about that for sure. That'll be an Instagramable moment. But um, yeah, and uh, another cool thing that I did not know, but apparently over there, um, their museums are free. To get into now you can donate if you want but they've got the natural history museum that we're definitely going to see because there's there's some things there i've been wanting to see um but all the museums are free unless they have a specific um art insulation insulation that you want to go to um yeah you can just go in there and walk around for free and see the, all the artwork that's in there i think that's awesome that's just this phenomenal so yeah, we're definitely going to take take advantage of uh, the different uh, museums. And two, I'm really interested. Um, they've got one for uh, what what Churchill calls the war room, which is the underground area where you know he essentially um, you know was able to end World War II. And um, they pretty much they were down there for like. Like five or six years, I think, or something like that. I remember seeing something on the video on it. And um, they were down there for a long time, but when, when the war ended, they just kind of, like, you know, took a few things, but they mainly left it, and it's just kind of as is, you know, as it was left. So I think that's just super cool, like, just to see, just to be in that same area, you know, where that was so, so... Uh, so emotional right about you know just doing things so yeah that that i'm looking kind of i'm looking forward to that hopefully we'll get to see that that would be probably like one of my you know off to the side kind of jaunts things to do but yeah and i just love how they have different names for different things there like like a a grilled cheese sandwich is called a toasty i love it because there was like, there's a, a, a really big market there, like an outdoor market, and it's called Borough Market. And um, it was like, it said three cheese toasty. And I'm like, oh yeah, you got me. Got me with the three cheese toasty right there. Um, scotch eggs. If you know what a scotch egg is, but it's basically an egg uh, inside, wrap, uh, wrapped in sausage. And then like cooked and so the sausage is on the outside and then you bite it and the egg will be on the inside kind of almost like a hard-boiled egg like i make mine hard-boiled but it could be soft it could be a soft egg um but yeah it's super good it's a really good meal very high in protein but i noticed that one of the vendors had a chorizo scotch egg i absolutely love chorizo um I'm even, I'm very, I'm probably going to have one. It might upset my stomach later. We might be having to look for bathrooms while we're out, but hey, you know what? I can't pass that up. It's going to be so good. Yeah, and just different things to eat there. Like there's lots of people on, on YouTube that will just go around the city and, um, you know, share their favorite areas with you. So 
that's really cool that you get to kind of see, you know, what 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 can I expect as far as um, meals go. So yeah, we've got lots of good things to eat. Of course, fish and fish and chips that has to be done. Um, and then there's one place that does a a legit traditional English breakfast, um, which means like um, I think that blood sausage and something else and my wife was like absolutely not i'm like well i'll try it you know i'm up for it you say i had it and we can definitely split it like it is so much food it's crazy so i hope i get to do that um trying to think of what else chinatown there's a really nice uh chinatown there and look like there are really some really good places to eat um and visit so i would like i'm definitely want to do that um, you know, maybe do a little bit of shopping. I thought I do like, um, Abbey hats. So I thought maybe I would actually get one in London. Um, see about that. And what else? Uh, there's, there's actual Doc Martin stores, which is cool. Um, but I probably, I mean, I probably won't buy any boots while I'm there because I have Whatever I, I come in with, I mean, I have to pretty much leave. I have to leave some room. You know, maybe take back some things. Because I am doing carry-on only, so... Yeah, I don't have a lot of room for, uh... For, you know, in my suitcase for extra stuff. It's gonna be fun. I mean... I'm already... Pr I'm pretty much packed. I mean, I've, like I said, I'm not gonna wear those... The items that I have for the trip um, until I'm on the trip. So, um, and then I just got like travel sizes of things that I would, you know, everyday stuff that I would use. So, yeah, I'm pretty much ready to be packed away and ready to go. And, uh, yeah. So I'm probably going to have some really good stories for you guys when I get back, for sure. Alright. Getting somewhere now. Trying to look a little better. Not focusing just on his face. Again, I'm just, I'm just doing base colors right at the moment. I'm not doing any kind of um, you know, shading or anything like that yet. Laying down some base colors here. And what feels good. I feel like I, I need to go in on this shirt and do like every other stripe. I don't know, what do you guys think? I'll tell you guys something that, that happened last night and when we were doing our, our ghost story night a couple weeks back, um, we have a little tiny uh, battery operated uh, under the cabinet light in the kitchen. And we don't use it a whole lot. I don't even know why we got it, honestly. I mean, I think it was just if one of us came out to the kitchen um, you know, or, or my wife was like, oh, this, this area is really dark, you know, when I'm making coffee or whatever, but it doesn't come on very often. We don't use it very often. I don't at least, but it, it must have been used at some point and it, it didn't get shut off. But I was sitting here and of course, you know, I'm looking out and it's dark out there now because the light, the light I had on the timer, has gone out. Um, and all of a sudden I thought, I was like, I thought I saw something like it was really weird. And, um, and then I looked out and then that light was on and I was like, all right, that's weird. And I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll, you know, address it when I get up and when I get done in here. And then the next time I looked up, it was out. Like, okay, that's really weird. So I went over to it and I tried to get it to come on and it wouldn't come on. So, like... So I just took the base off and replaced the batteries and put it back in and it uh, it hasn't done it but I just thought that was really weird and then too like something else that happened today like when I woke up 
uh, my phone alarm was going off and I was pretty sure I shut it off, right? And then I got up, I was in the shower and I was thinking, I was like, I think my alarm's gonna go off again. And it was just like, why was I even thinking that? Like, I don't even know what I was thinking about. And then sure enough, all of a sudden, a few minutes later, there goes my alarm and I was just like, that's really weird. So I must have hit the snooze. I'm not realizing that I did. I don't normally do that. Um, and uh, yeah, just <laughs> weird stuff for sure. Weird things are happening. So, I don't know what kind of panty. He's got like, it's not like dark blue, bluish, like almost like a. What's the name of those pants that are not Carhartts, but there's the other the other brand, Dickies. Like Dickies. I think. I also think he's got cowboy boots on, technically, but I didn't draw those. I drew just regular boots. Almost like he's got dark Doc Martens on. Oh yeah. I did say I wanted to do every other I promise you, promise you. Or, I'll do that next. Just I at two hours yeah i think we're probably gonna cut it short here in a bit that wall that i was talking about earlier is coming in oh i think the last time i streamed too i was talking about the witcher oh no i was watching those man Season two, man, I'm telling you, I was just like, what? Yeah, I uh, can't wait for season three. And then there's going to be an offshoot of it. Um, it's like a prequel. It's like, if I remember right, if I think it was for The Witcher, it's like a thousand something years before The Witcher or something like that. It's it's going to be mostly about the fairies, I think. and the, I mean, the fae. So, um, yeah. Super excited to, to see where that goes. Um, and then, of course, bringing the Witcher back. So, yeah. Really, really like it a lot. Glad I, I'm glad I stuck with it and uh, didn't give up on it. It's, it's super cool. I wish I could remember what that, what that offshoot one is called. I can't remember. Yeah, I read a series of books one time called uh, Sword in the Stone or something in the Crown. It was like three books. I may still have them around here somewhere. But it was written, you know, a pseudonym. Some I don't think it was really this one this this person's name, but 
it was just awesome and it went through the whole thing about the tree of life and the different levels of the tree and all the different creatures and all the different beings and the levels that they lived in and how they were because of that and just all this cool stuff and it took me forever to read the first book because there was so much in it that I had to um I had to find out about like I had to like research while I was reading this book because I was like I have no idea what they're talking about like what is that and um yeah it, it took me a really long time to read that book but man once I got into it once it was it was going and just gearing up oh, it was so good I mean like I might have to reread them but it's been so long since I've read it probably ooh, probably like 25 years or more since I've read it And then, of course, um, you know, I was telling my wife about the mist of Avalon. Um, if you're into Shake, or Shakespeare, if you're into King Arthur, which I am, absolutely love. Um, it's really so good. It's from the women's perspective, and it's really good. And yeah, they did a little mini series way back in the day on it as well. But um, yeah, the, the book is just. Awesome. As far as that kind of fantasy, but it's kind of what The Witcher reminds me of is, you know, because it they keep referencing that tree and it keeps, you know, kind of, um, you know, kind of hinting at, at the tree, I guess, a, a bit, like the tree of life and things like that, so... Yeah. I like that stuff a lot. And it's just, I mean, it's just cool to think, you know, there was a time when, you know, you had knights and lords and ladies and, you know, queens and kings and things like that to, to talk, you know, to get excited about. And, yeah, so just it fascinates me. Now, however, being a woman during those times sucked us. Because, yeah, you had no rights whatsoever. You're considered pretty much property, you know, your husband's property. And, yeah, it just, uh, unless you were probably, you know, unless you were royalty, I don't know that it would work out very well for most people. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> Yeah, there's that to consider. Gave him some nice little robe jeans here. Blue. get up to the where it needs to be which you know are you guys really gonna see that in the grand scheme of things probably not but I know it's there and I'm a perfectionist so that's what I gotta do gotta do what I gotta do Yeah, so let's, on the shirt, I think I'm going to go, oh, cause the, no, I can't because I, then that's going to take out, yep, oh, unless I, wow, that would be an undertaking, wouldn't it?
just do like every other one instead of I feel like they're too close together so what I did was I, I'm just actually I'm using the paintbrush as an eraser um, the same base color so we're just erasing it out better. Yeah, that's better, I think. It's going to take a little bit of time. It's a little tedious, but it's alright. Well, somebody has a better idea on how to get that out of there, then you just got to go ahead and do line by line. Yeah, I think I like that better. Alright, well, it's gonna take some time to get the rest of those out of there. So, alright, well, I think I'm going to just go ahead and cut it short tonight. Um, leave that where it's at. Um, today's Wednesday. So, I may do a pop up Thursday or Friday. I've gotta put some extra hours in at work. Um, so, I might not, might not stream again until Saturday. But um, yeah, we'll stream on Saturday, see how it goes. Um, so yeah, hope everybody is safe and uh, warm or not, or cool wherever you're at, depending on where you're at in the country. Um, and that you're all uh, enjoying your week. And um, that's it for now. We'll just go ahead and uh, meet up again on Saturday. Thanks for stopping by. And um, just remember, you can go to Twitter, uh, sign up for to follow me so that you know uh, when I'm gonna stream. Um, I did see something on um, Streamlabs about um, notifying, uh, making a notification to Twitter when I go live. So I'll try to figure that out um, so you'll know that I'm live there. If you're following me on Twitter, um, Discord, you can uh, follow me on Discord. Everything is cosmic underscore ghost at uh, 13. You should be able to find me um, pretty much anywhere. Um, on TikTok, I usually don't think about going in there and posting a video. I did tonight. I just posted a quick one. Hey, I'm going to stream. Um, come by and say hi. Um, definitely on Instagram. Um, I'll post just different things, you know, throughout the throughout the day. Sometimes um, across something funny that's related to what I'm doing. Um, as far as my stream, um, I'll post it. And then YouTube. So if you miss this video, that's okay. Um, if you miss the stream, um, it'll be on uh, Twitch for a couple days, but everything gets archived to YouTube. So all of my videos from, from day one of my streaming are um, on YouTube. So same thing, cosmic underscore ghost 13. Anyway, um, thanks again for coming by. I do appreciate you guys, whether you say something or you don't. If you're there in the background, that's fine. If you want to chat, that's fine. Um, and uh, we will plan on doing this again on Saturday. All right, take care.